Hi viewers, in this video I will show you how I replaced the upper control arm and the lateral toe link on the rear right side of the Jeep Patriot. First I parked the vehicle on an even surface. Then I measured the distance between the center of the wheel and the wheel fender as shown. This measurement will be used later in this video as spacing reference to preload the bushings. Soon after, I safely jacked up the vehicle and I secured it with one floor jack, three jack stands and four wheel chucks. I live up north and it is common to have rusted parts under older vehicles. So it is useful to spray penetrating fluid on the bolts before undoing them. I also replaced the strut assemblies but the procedure was described in a previous video. Here you can see the upper control arm. I had no problem to undo the outer bolt. I used a wrench and a ratchet tool to undo this bolt. Note, the nut shown on the inner bracket of the upper arm is welded on the bracket. It took me more time to unscrew the bolt from the inner bracket because there was not much room to work. At first I used a ratchet with a socket to unscrew the bolt, then I completed it with a ratcheting wrench. Since I had a good used upper control arm in stock, I used it to replace the defective one I took out. Before installing the new part, I removed some dirt and rust built up from the brackets. This procedure made it easier to fit the part in the bracket. The other task I had to do was to use a wire brush and a rag to clean the bolts. To reduce the risk of getting the bolts stuck inside the bushings in the future, I applied a small coat of anti-seize on the threads but not where the threads of the bolts were in contact with the nuts. After, I inserted the inner side of the upper control arm in the crossmember bracket. Note, there is a hole in the upper control arm to indicate the inner side. The first bolt I fastened was loosely tightened. To easily insert the other end of the upper control arm in the bracket, I raised the trailing arm to get a better fitting position. Then I inserted and adjusted the spherical bearing. Next, the outer bolt was loosely fastened to keep the part ready for the preload procedure. The other part I had to replace was the lateral toe link. This multi-link suspension part is also used to adjust the toe angle of the wheel. The nut on the outer bracket was also welded, so I only needed to unscrew the bolt to remove it. I marked the position of the cam washers on the two external sides of the inner bracket. This was done before removing the cam bolt. The cam nut on the inner end of the tool link was easy to unscrew, but I had to use a hammer to get the bolt out of the bushing. Sometimes a bolt can get stuck in the rust built up and it can be very difficult to get it out. I did remove most of the rust build up on the bracket, including the surface between the cam abutments. Before installing the new part, I compared it with the old one. I didn't find any official Jeep documentation confirming the position of the spherical bearings. But, so far, the ones I have seen are usually installed on the outer side. A screwdriver can be used to loosely hold the bushing in the bracket during the installation. This helped me to fit the rubber bushing in the inner bracket. Once in place, I inserted the cam bolt to hold the tool link. Using the marks, I adjusted the two cam washers to the original position. When the cam bolt assembly was in place, I loosely fastened the nut, then the bushing was ready to be preloaded. They must also be properly seated between the abutments on the external sides of the bracket. Next, I inserted the bolt in the outer bracket to hold the bushing. I fastened the bolt, but it was not tightened. When all the parts were in place, I lifted the trailing arm with a small jack to preload the bushings. To begin, I tightened the two bolts holding the upper control arm. The torque was set to 70 foot-pounds. Note, the space was tight around the inner bracket, so I had to use a smart torque wrench to apply the torque. 
After, the outer tooling bolt was tightened and the torque was set to 70 foot-pounds. Finally, I kept the cam bolt stationary in position and I tightened the cam nut. The torque was set to 26 foot-pounds. Later, when all the parts were installed, I performed a road test. Once back in my garage, I decided to compare the tool link I removed with another one I kept from another Jeep Patriot. My tool link was an aftermarket part and the other one was an original Mopar part. First, I checked the rubber bushing of the aftermarket tool link. It was so loose that I was able to get it out with only one finger. The boot of the spherical bearing was broken, but it was moving properly. The Mopar rubber bushing was off-centered and not tight enough to stay in place under normal conditions. On the other end, the Mopar spherical bearing seemed completely rusted. To properly inspect the spherical bearing, I had to cut some components. The red tape was for the Mopar part and the green tape was for the aftermarket part. As you can see, the design of this part didn't have the space to hold an appropriate quantity of grease. So, it was not good enough to lubricate and protect the spherical bearing for many years. The other spherical bearing was well greased and protected even if one boot was damaged. I didn't cut the upper control arm to inspect it, but the problems are basically the same. The Jeep Patriot rear suspension system is not well suited for this vehicle, especially in cold conditions, because many parts are rusty and the bushings do not last long enough.